Hello and welcome to this short video which is designed to give you more information about Yeovil Refresh, our plan to create a town centre that will be a vibrant place to live, shop, learn and visit. Um, we've convened an expert panel here today to give you all the information that you need and answer your questions. You've been posing some questions to us on social media uh, over the past few days, which we're going to try and get through as many of those as possible. But first of all, let me introduce you to the panel, so we'll start with, with Natalie. Okay, Natalie Full, I'm the Regeneration Programme Manager for the District Council. Hi, I'm Ian Sims. I'm the Oval Refresh Project Manager for the District Council. Hello, I'm David Wern. I'm President of the Oval Chamber of Trade and Commerce. I'm Peter Cummins, Chair of Area South and the Chair of the Board for the Oval Free Refresh Programme. Okay, excellent. Let's get straight into the questions then. Um, so, it's hopefully, an easy one to start with. Um, what is Yeovil Refresh? Do you want to start with that one, Natalie? Through the Yeovil Refresh, we want to make Yeovil Town Centre accessible, safe, and attractive for our visitors. We're working with um, Somerset County Council through highways to make the town centre as accessible as possible, either through car, cycling, walking, etc. Um, and we also want to encourage a better mix in the town centre so that we encourage people to stay later into the evening and not just sort of come in, get what they need and go. We want people to stay longer in an attractive space. Sure. Uh, Peter, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, it, well, I agree with everything that Natalie said. I mean, it's, we know town centres are changing. We, we need to change with them now and the town centre, which we're going to do. Um, it, it's a case of really invigorating our town centre. Uh, and make it a destination, you know, a destination town, not a town that you're just whipping it out, a town to visit, stay, and enjoy the town centre. And the town centres are changing, it's not just all about shopping now, it's diverse activities in town. In fact, we've even got a, a new fitness centre in the middle of the airport, yeah. which is evidently booming, and we, we encourage more activities like this, for instance, um, Super Saturdays, etc. etc. Okay, so I mean, I, I mean, as you, as, you, as you may know, I'm not sure you know, uh, I was a journalist before I joined uh, the District Council, uh, and I've sort of been reporting on Yeovil for a little while before that, um, and I sort of covered a number of other sort of regeneration projects in Yeovil before. And I think a feeling that some people may have is, is that perhaps those regeneration projects haven't delivered what we said they were going to deliver. So with Yeovil Refresh, what's what's the difference this time? What's changed? How is this going to deliver that, that meaningful change? I, I think this, this time around it will be delivered, and the reason from, certainly from the, the business sector point of view, is because there is a high degree of cooperation between the business sector and the district council. Sure. Yeah, also is the, before the, what we had before, I think you're going on about the Young uh, Vision, yeah. which is about 14, 15 years ago, but that wasn't just the town centre. Mm -hmm. this, this, is the, this is the town centre, the area only, it's, it's not the outer urban areas, although obviously from a business point of view it would affect it in many ways, but this is purely about it. The council has set up a budget, a large budget, for it to go ahead. And in fact, it, it isn't a case will it go ahead, it is going ahead, it started. Yes, absolutely. There's things happening actually, yeah. I mean, even today, I mean, we, we all know the investments that's been made in Yeovil since the refresh started, i.e. Cattle Market, um, the marketing group with the Glover's War, done out in the Greenland restaurants. I had an email yesterday um, confirming there's been three more purchases of properties right in the smack bank in the middle of the yeah. airport. Good. I can't say who they are, it's highly confidential at the moment, but the possibility of the fourth one. So this is what's going on, this is what the refresh is bringing to our town, this is what's essentially has to go ahead. Yeah. Well, it will, it is going ahead. Okay. Uh, one of the questions that I think we were asked is, you know, we, we often get this, the high street, why can't it go back to like it was in the whatever decade you want to go back to? But I think as part of your refresh, is there an acceptance here that we are, we are, we have to, to see that the high street is changing, the high street cannot be like it was 20, 30 years yes. ago? Uh, the, the, the curtain has definitely come down on the old traditional model of the high street. Uh, as Peter rightly said, people don't go to towns to shop anymore, they go for experiences. And Yeovil is ahead of the game, I believe, something from, again from the business point of view, on, on this, this aspect of the changing town centre. Um, the, the town centre of Yeovil now is about experience, and retail will still be there, but it will just be a vital component of the experience, the overall experience of the town centre. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. it's something like 20% of all um, spend in UK retailers takes place online now. Yeah. So 
So obviously retailers have got to respond to that and um, diversify. And like you say, experience is something that you can't get online, and that's that's a, an area that the high street can explore and expand on. Yeah, and, and just taking that a stage further, um, there are there are people out there that will very vigorously tell me that the internet is killing the high street. And I've been saying to them that there are businesses now arriving in Yeovil that if the internet such that if the internet dried up tomorrow, they would struggle to maintain their business. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I agree with a lot of what you said on this. It's um, I think it's a point though with the refresh in itself, which I do have to keep fucking up, but the refresh in itself is encouraging investors to come to this town and it's proving it all the time. And what is good this time is not a major company that's gone in for investment in this last piece of investments is, is a smaller area, although it's confidence they've got within Yeovil. The refresh is started that, that I'm going, but it's generated a confidence in business. It's generated confidence, I think, in local people as well. And this advice to say, it's essential we move on with this and we move on rapidly with it. Yeah, def definitely capture the opportunities and, and, em and embrace the change. As, as Peter rightly says, the, the seed investment uh, from South Somerset District Council, along with the private investment arriving, it, it's, it's happening in tandem. We, we've seen evidence of the, of the public sector seed investment, which is the acquisition of Marks and Spencers and Wilkinsons. And on the, as I said, in tandem to that, we have very large private residential developments going up in the Westing Gazette offices and the former Porter Dodson offices in Church Street. Um, and in addition to that, we've got a premier inn at the bottom of town, and I believe a travel lodge is looking to come on the corner of uh, Goldcroft and Rappleford. Yeah. And if that, and, and people don't set up hotels for nothing, they yeah. see the the competence is there. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. we've had the use of the Westgate Z flaps. They bought the old park, which is the cream, etc. Yeah. Whatever it's from, along with they're doing those. Yeah. And they put a, a reasonable amount of money actually uh, set aside for public ground down within that area. Now, yeah. That people don't do that unless they see what is happening within a town, how a town's going with you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. People can see the potential, can't they? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of the things we, we, we also get asked as, as, as part of this, it comes up quite a lot, almost every thread that we sort of see why can't you just lower the business rates and that will fill the empty shops? But is it as simple as no, that? No, it's not. We, we, we've been, uh, Young Chamber, we've been working with district and the landlords in town through other agencies to encourage them to make leasing arrangements more flexible. One of the reasons that uh, you know, certain parts of Yoga fled to a sharp decline back along is because they were the, the leasing arrangements were very inflexible. Um, and the, 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 the environment in town is a lot more conducive to people coming in. The, the landlords have started to flex, uh, build more flexibility in the leasing arrangements. And also, uh, the the uh, the landlords are also offering, in certain cases, rent-free deals to attract people in. I know the Queendown Shopping Centre, for one, is is an advocate of that yeah. that arrangement. So then the 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 conditions on the ground in Yeovil, from a from a business attractiveness point of view, is very good. Yeah. But the business rates, so, so that we don't control. We collect business rates for the government. We don't control the business rate settings. If only we could. Um, my advice, and I've always said this, is. The one person that could actually help us to do something this is the local MP. Yeah. He has the voice in Parliament yeah. to do it. But we can't. There's nothing we can do about it, unfortunately. And um, Ian, that's it. I mean, if there's, there's support that we provide as well for, for business as well, so make sure we can find the help we need. We can't, we can't control the rates, but. Yeah, I mean, we, we, there's a range of discounts on offer which we've applied. Um, there's a new retail re relief uh, which comes in from April, so we're working with businesses to get that out to them and really encourage them to apply for that and to, to uh, you know, try and get that relief for the next couple of years. So, so whenever there's whenever there's a discount or there's something we can do, we are there trying to help businesses yeah. to. Yeah, to we actively encourage yeah. businesses mm -hmm. to take that up. Sure, yeah. And the retail rate relief is actually thirty percent uh, reduction on their current bill, and that's on top of any other reductions that they might already be receiving. Yeah. So that is going to, you know, hopefully have an impact on those businesses that are sure. struggling yeah, in no, the retail I'm, sector. I, I would echo that, Natalie. It's uh, I've been working with several businesses around town who flagged up that they're having a nightmare with business rates. Uh, my contact at the planning team in, in district has paid those businesses a visit, explained the situation in plain English. Um, in not all cases, they get reliefs and exemptions. 
but some of them do. And I, th I think the point I'm trying to make is that there is there's that level of cooperation between district and the business community in that respect, and that is reaping dividends. Yeah, I think that's probably covered quite neatly the next question we had, which is what we're actually doing and what, how are we supporting those local businesses? But that support is there, and I think we've covered quite a lot of ground there. So, uh, in terms of your reference, and, and, and this is another question that sort of comes up, but what is actually going to, to change? I think we, we've sort of seen some stories recently. You know, people say it's been a year. Um, we haven't sort of seen any physical change, but you know, the building blocks have been sort of set in place over the past years. But what what can we expect in future years to come from from Yeovil Refresh? Well, I think you can see it entirely different in town centre actually. Um, the a new design from the public realm side, i.e., if you take Middle Street in itself, is so cluttered now. It, it in its day it was right, but it's not anymore. Um, it needs to be less of a clutter down that main street. We want to see more market systems where we've been working with them. Uh, Yobel, um, Super Saturdays and things like that, they need to be brought up within that area. Yeah. Um, if you get down within the, um, uh, I've got the triangle, the um, bandstand area. The bandstand area, yeah. Um, that needs to be an area of recreation. We see it happening in other towns, we see it abroad. Well, a good example is down in Brewers Wharf in Dorchester where they've got that around the side outside. It attracts so many people, it attracts businesses. But again, that may take a bit of time because we need to talk to the marketing group to find out what they're doing with their Glover's Wharf side. Yeah. We're not sure what we're going to do there. We also have another business that we've been talking to for two or three years now who's very keen to be in that area and places to building within that area. But it is there, it will happen. Believe it will happen. So I think they'll see a totally different high street. Yeah. Um, Great. Is there think, anything you want to add to that, Natalie, at all? Um, just that we are working around the access issues as mm -hmm. well. So um, we want to make sure that people, when they get here, um, you know, it's easy to get here. The car parking review is looking at signage so that when people, you know, it's easier to access. Once you get here, it's easier to park. And then, as Peter says, you know, when you're walking around, it is more attractive. There's more on offer. Um, there's nicer places to, to spend some time. So it, okay. the whole experience. I, I think the crucial element is this isn't about the district council trying to bring a major retailer to the town centre. It's about making the changes, doing the building blocks, creating the confidence that inspires businesses to move to to Yeovil. Absolutely. Which we're already starting to see. Yeah. But these guys. Retail units on there, even there now. They're, they're like the, the likes of Tesco's, and they're, they're looking more to the, the smaller models. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't expect we'll see the, the major retail stores like the Debenhams and that, like we used to see. Um, we know town centres is changing, and I say, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah the, 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 what, what the refresh is also tied into is the very real evidence that people are migrating back in towards towns. And you mentioned earlier on when we go back to the old model. Another reason we won't go back to the original model is just that. Because people are, are migrating into towns, there's less need for people to drive to live, work, and play. So you need to pedestrianize areas in town to accommodate those extra people that are living in town. Sure. 